welcome, 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 everyone. Wow, we are live. <laughs> um, we're just going to take a couple of minutes to share, make sure everyone is joining us on today's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful show. Um, just waiting for the link so that we can send it, share it everywhere. Let me see if we get. Okay, got it. So I have the Facebook first. I'm going to send this to you. Just going to tap, 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 share, share, share. Um, Just trying to share to get people on. Okay. Yes. Okay. I hope you don't mind. No, 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 no. I'm just waiting for you. <laughs> Thank you. I think we have a uh, few people joining in. Um, yeah. Hi, 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 everyone who is live with us right now. We're just going to wait for more people to join in two minutes. Um, but whilst you're waiting for people to join, if you have any questions about in law relationships, any questions for Elder Amos, please just get them ready. <laughs> Because we'll be digging in um, with Elder Amos and then today. Um, so we're just going to go straight. We're just going to start now, really. But I hear there's some people online. So we're just going to start. Just say hi if you're online. Just chat. Just type hi in the comments. Let us know you're there. What country are you joining us from? Because we know it's streaming all over. So just put your country in the chat. Let us know. Let us send you a shout out. So thank you once again, Elder Amos, for joining us. Um, I'm so, I just can't believe I'm sitting here with you right now. <laughs> We're just going to dig in. <laughs> We're going to dig in right now. As most of you know, it's, this is the road to the book launch. And this is the final panel discussion. And we 
no other person but the renowned, well known <laughs> Elder Amos Anna. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna drill Elba today. He's gonna tell us from the years of experience what opinion is, what his experiences has been with this particular issue. And I used to listen to Elda way back when I was in Lagos, so you can imagine how I, <laughs> how much I used to be so shy after he speaks. To me, <laughs> and I had so many questions, but if this could ever approach me. To Happy yes, I'm gonna drill him today. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh dear yes. Lord. Uh, We're hmm. just gonna relate it straight, Elda. So um do you think, Elda, with all these years of experience you have, do you think that in law problems, is this something that you think I am probably just making a lot of noise or about, or is this something that's <laughs> not happening, you know? Based on your experience, all these decades of experience, how has you know that this whole in-law so how has that been like with all your years of experience is it real is there something happening in marriages everywhere well thank you very much i i'm delighted to be sharing this platform with you and i am grateful to god for your life and the opportunity to be able to speak to your global patrons and audience as well as friends family members and colleagues and persons in the faith and people who are pursuing this journey of marriage. We are all learners and sojourners at the same time. Well, to your question, with respect to the issue of in-law relationships and what um, you are advocating in terms of making sure that it works well. I think that in-law relationships can be good but can also go bad depending on who and how they are going about it. Who in the sense that if you have people who haven't made peace with their past, it tends to impact on in-law relationships. Good in the sense that if people start well with their in-laws, chances are that they would stay well with their in-laws and they won't have acrimonious relationships. And so for the records, I am sitting in my in-law's home and I'm doing this with wow. you. Uh, so wow. it tells you the relationship I have with my in-laws. Um, they have actually stepped in to be my parents since I lost my dad and mom four years ago. So if I didn't have a good relationship with them, they wouldn't have stepped in to be my parents because the word in-law is a relative by means of marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So an in-law, strictly speaking, is not a stranger, is not an outsider. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, what I see is that in some cases, in-laws become outlaws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what, that's what you are hoping through your book to speak to. Yes. Uh, so persons who are experiencing rancorous or um nightmarish experience as you describe it in the book mm. can get some lessons for the way forward yes. and i believe that god's grace will be helpful to each amen. one of us amen i love i love the fact that you're actually in your in-laws house as you speak. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing so god bless them so much and god bless you for because i know it's both parties it's not just one party that ensures no. Yeah. God bless you both for sharing that piece. But for those couples who are also having those in law problems, and I remember like people just ignore it. And Elda, why do you think people like they don't want to find solutions to it? Why do they just let it slide? You know, why why has that been the, the norm over the years? Because I remember my grand my grandmom had in law problems that actually eventually led to her marriage breaking down. You know, my mom had you know problems and then so i get married and i automatically like carry my the past of my grandma and my mom into my own marriage so people don't deal with it why why is that so why don't we find a solution to it well i, I think that i did remark from the outset that some individuals haven't made peace with their past mm -hmm. so there are individuals who for instance will find solace and comfort in the scenario that you painted that is my grandmother had a problem with in-laws, my mother had problems with in-laws. So they come to a place of justifying their 
problems with their in-laws whereas they should not forget that they are not their grandmother neither are they their mother and therefore each one of us has a story which is being written differently you know of course the story of our lives oftentimes is not written by our script um there's a scripter and you must know who is writing the story of your life and then have a connection with um, your creator, your maker, the Lord, our God. And it's important that people uh, come to a place where when we celebrate Easter, for instance, we are in the Lent season now leading up to Easter and the commemoration of our death, burial, resurrection um, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, what you find is this. We say often, by his stripes, we were healed. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that by Hannes struggles, ours is going to be stabilized. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, it, that, that's basically what I see happening because as I read the book uh, decoding the in-law issues, uh, I discovered that you have shared generously your struggles in the beginning. I like the bit about the air condition with the boys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, and that, that is why I'm saying that by Hannah's struggle, we become stabilized and then we become better as persons who relate with in-laws. But let it be said that in-law relationship is not just with father and mother-in-laws, because mm -hmm. you have sister-in-laws, brother-in-laws. Mm -hmm. And um, so let's look at it in a broader scope, because I have dealt with cases where the in-law strain is not with a father or mother, but with a sister or a brother. Mm -hmm. In some cases, even a cousin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Or an auntie, an auntie or an uncle who has a vested interest in pushing for someone else other than you. And so that sets the relationship on a rank cross journey. Mm -hmm. So in-law relationships, there's a whole spectrum. Yeah. But when we find where the problem is, then we can address it because it is said that the chain is strongest at its weakest point. Mm -hmm. So you find where the strain is, where the stress, where the tension is, where the problem is, and then you can find solution to it. But if you can't find it, how then do you find solutions to what it is that you don't have solutions to? And so people should not go and find an excuse in, say, a scripture like the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth have been set on edge. It is easy to say that, but let us not forget that Jeremiah said that one, but Ezekiel also said that in those days, you no longer say that the fathers have eaten some grapes and the children's teeth have been set on edge. So don't be a recycled version of your parents' struggle. None of us should settle for that. And if you settle for that, then it's quite pathetic. It's an unfortunate situation. It shouldn't be. You can start a new story. You can break that cycle, vicious as it is, so that you can tell a new story, which is a redemption story. Exactly. Wow. I love, love, love that, Elder. I love that. Thank you so much. And I love how you know, you're know you saying that it's actually, we have to acknowledge when we have that problem and try to solve it. And I love how you said like the children, we don't think about our, our future generation. So if we are carrying the past of our parents' own maybe toxic relationship with their in-laws, and we come into our own marriages and we have these in-law problems in our marriages, we don't think mm -hmm. about our future. We don't think about our children. How will the, how will it look like in our children's generation? If our mm -hmm. children see the way we treat our in-laws, will they begin to think that that is the norm? And just like we are thinking it's normal to have toxic relationship with our in-laws our children will also have those and then the cycle will just keep continuing right oh that, that is what i feel like it's happening and i believe that's what you also think it's happening that it just keeps going on over and over again but that being said Elda, what are some of the practical solutions from the book and from your experience that people can actually use <laughs> to help them? i love how you said it's not just the mother and the father but Actually, most of the time it's the siblings because mm -hmm. once you get married, and I, I, I said, this, <laughs> yeah, you're, you know, once you get married, like my brother and I, my brother, we're so close, but mm -hmm. marriage didn't 
stop that closeness. It just changed its dynamics. But mm. once we get married, we always we want to somehow cut off our spouses, siblings. You know, that relationship just evolves into a new way. So how do we just deal with this practically? All right. Okay. I think that, um, for instance, when you look at your book, the about the book info, you make a proposition that first and foremost, one needs to decode the issue. Yeah. Now, so what are you decoding? The decoding is the reason and the responsibility for marriage. And that is to live and cleave and become one flesh. Yeah. You see, that reason is compelling. And because it is compelling, all of us who believe in the couple and believe in the pursuit that they have set themselves to would have to pledge our hearts and our everything to ensure that they are able to live, cleave, and become one flesh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When couples follow this continuum, I prefer to call it a continuum because it's not a linear stretch mm -hmm. where you, you live from, from one to the other and to the other. No, it's a cyclical thing. You're doing it every day. Every day in my life, I have to leave some things. Yeah. Every day I have to strain and stress to cleave. Every day I have to work towards becoming one flesh. Because one flesh does not happen automatically. Neither does it fall like manna from heaven. It's strenuous work because like Ecclesiastes says, two is better than one, but they have a good reward for their labor. There is a certain laboring that is required to ensure that this becomes our responsibility. And it takes two to tango and therefore... The couple must first understand that they are a couple. Mm -hmm. The reason why sometimes in-laws become intrusive or sometimes obstructive uh, in a relationship between husband and wife is basically because they have allowed that space to exist. Mm -hmm. The couple should bridge that space and mm -hmm. ensure that they are doing what God expects of them as husband and wife. And they must render to each other what is due one another. Mm -hmm. Now, some individuals set off with the relationship coming from a historical perspective. Mm -hmm. So they are coming from where their mom used to be and where their dad used to be or where their brother went and they didn't work out. And so they set themselves to fight that unfinished battle. Mm -hmm. Now, when you find people fighting the unfinished battle, there is no way they are going to win. And so practically, you sus you 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 encourage us to view them with a new lens because mm -hmm. when you wear a new lens depending on the coloration of the lens you see the image per the color of the lens mm -hmm. now if you have um, a conclave uh, lens it will show if you have a converse lens too it will show differently so i want to propose that first and foremost each one of us must understand that we all emit a certain degree of toxicity so we must make ourselves ready and be gracious enough to accept the toxicity that comes from others yeah some, yep. some of us some of us especially when i talk about toxic relationships i mean i don't know if you've listened to my four-part series titled toxicity in treasure tanks and i make the case very strongly that where i sit after 31 years of working with people I have come to the firm conclusion that every human being, including myself and yourself, emit yeah. a certain degree of toxins. Yep. That, that toxicity that we emit is what creates the tension between us and others. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so first and foremost, people need to understand that when we talk about in-laws, in-laws too are human beings. Mm -hmm. And what defines a human being? They have strengths and they have weaknesses. They have biases and they have state of solidarity where they stand with others. Mm -hmm. Secondly, in-laws also are persons who may struggle with patience. It's not every in-law who is patient uh, with the other party. And therefore, they may not always wait for their turn. Um, and so it's important that we communicate to them in a way that will be helpful for us to build a relationship. Now... To be able to relate with an in-law properly, I would also suggest that we become humane. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You see, sometimes we play the angel, but you see, God didn't even ask us to be angels. Yep. God expects <laughs> us to be humans. Yeah. But of course, we are created in God's <laughs> image and after God's likeness. And therefore, being humane means you have to be humble. Too many of us take a posture of arrogance and we blow our own trumpet, we poke our nose in the skies and create an air of superiority towards others. And it is not a good place to find yourself. You must also be careful whenever you're speaking with persons you consider as in-laws. Why? Because like the scripture tells us, let me look for a scripture. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29, it says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to your hearers. Mm -hmm. So I want to also propose that, like the writer of Proverbs says that kind words are very important and it suits anger. So just like you also get angry sometimes, your in-law could be angry for one reason or the other. And therefore, you must be careful in the choice of words and in the deployment of words. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a student of language and I love language because linguistically that is how we exist. Mm -hmm. um, communication is the basis of life according to Edwin Lewis Cole, who impacted me as a boy through his men's network. You know, So conversations with your in-laws must be done with care and consideration. Don't just speak out of turn, throw words at them and say some like people will say typically in Ghana and somewhere, I speak my mind. Uh, no, please. I beg you. Don't take, don't, don't take that to your in-laws. Don't speak your mind. <laughs> but you know, I'm not cutting you off, Elder, but I love mm -hmm. some of the points you've raised, you know, that we should look at them with a new lens. Like I say, that we we'll call let's call a spade a spade. Let, let's walk a mile in their shoes. And I love mm -hmm. how you have conversations, how we speak to them. Sometimes some people don't even know anything about the history of their in-laws. So sometimes their history is actually what is making them behave the way they are behaving. So exactly. why don't we spend time? And if you don't know what questions to ask them, and in the book, I have all like, you know, conversation starters in the book. I yeah, to, you know, know what questions to ask them to dig deeper. I'm not going to yeah. cut you off, Elda, but I just want to read some comments, and I'm going to Please let do. you introduce yourself because I wanted to, I wanted to let you introduce yourself in the middle when we have everyone <laughs> from, <laughs> from the beginning when people will lose. Oh, forgive. Amazing <laughs> is. So I'm just gonna and please get your questions ready. Elda is here. If you have any <laughs> questions about in laws. Make sure you put them in the comments or send me a message. I mean, we're going to shoot it all to Elda. And after that, there's a surprise. Elda is going to tell us about CCC, Creative Couples Conclave. Now, this is a worldwide thing. You, you just can't miss it. So please make sure you're staying on to the very end. And um, I'm just going to go through the comments now. Solo B, Solo B, thank you so much. Mami Nikoi says hi. Thank you, Mami. Jennifer Ifiadako, thank you. She said hi from Ghana. Hi, Dana. Dana is from Texas. Oliver from London. Thank you, Oliver. Samuel Amwako from Ghana. Hi, Sam. <laughs> oh, right. Prophets. Prophet Imanoli Free Jenkins is on. Hi, Prophets. Thank you for joining. <laughs> my friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, my daughter is a free. My oh. mother in law is a free. So Jenkins yeah. is a good friend. Oh, and my son is a free too. So we, yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Prophet. Um, Jennifer says, wow. Thank you, Jennifer. Rachel, Rachel's not from London. Thank you so much, Rachel. Christy Maker, big bro. Thank you for joining. <laughs> hey, my son, oh, Chris is my son. Christy, oh, he was my senior in Legon. He's my big brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kwabna Opoku says, interesting. Thank you, Kwabna, for joining. Um, Nancy, Nancy Efum, Mrs. Efum, thank you so much from London for joining. And Rachel says, one flesh does not happen automatically. Well said, Elder. Um, that's Rachel Sam and Rachel White says, deep. Um, El uh, Prophet, Prophet Efriya says, God bless you, Elder Amos, for this insight. Courage, Charlie says, great. Um, 
Yeah, and Emmanuel Lefebvre is again says, thank you, Elda. So thank you so much. If you have any questions, are you facing any difficulties with your in-laws? Are there any questions you want to ask about maybe your sibling, you know, your, your spouse's siblings or your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, whatever your questions are, just get them ready. So I'm going to let Elda introduce himself. This is what I want to do in the middle of the show. So Elda, can you please tell us who you are? Because some of oh. our... Hmm. Hannah, you know, Hannah Rich, you know that uh, I don't like talking about myself because I let what the Lord does through me speak for itself, not me. I am not the centerpiece of what graciously I am doing, but suffice it to be said that I am Amos Kevin Annan, married to Evelyn Kevin Annan. We are blessed with two daughters, Jesua and Efriye. Uh, currently, I run together with my family, what we call the Creative Couples Conclave, which is an intervention for couples. It's been running for the past seven years. And we do an annual getaway for couples and um, to help them to reflect and to uh, rebuild and then rebound. It's, it's always very necessary to develop resilience in ourselves because uh, life is not a walk in the park. It comes with ups and downs. It comes with difficulties. Uh, but we will be able to surmount them when we get good company. So we are there to encourage one another, the Creative Couples Conclave. And this year, uh, we are focusing on headaches, heartaches, and healing hugs. Um, and it's a very important one for us. Uh, we also have something for persons who are married. It's called Singles in 3D. Uh, 3D is basically singles in dating, singles in dilemma and singles in decision making and so it covers all the spaces of singlehood and uh, in that space we try to encourage them because being single in a predominantly married world is is tough and you need people to encourage you you need people to strengthen your arms so that you don't get into despair and dissolution so basically that's what we do for now and then we also have a hangout for uh, ladies is called Females in Fellowship Hangout um, is something we do exclusively for women. And we look at their responsibilities, their rights, and focus on royalty. Because my first book is actually for women. It's titled Becoming a Beauty for His Glory. And uh, it's made around on the university campuses for years. And yeah. so uh, we also, as a, as a sequel to this one, we have what we call Mobilizing Males, which is a platform for fathers and sons to sit together um, for, for them to hear the same thing. We want to bridge the gap that exists between older men and younger boys so that there's no um, distance in that area. So through our Mobilizing Male Initiative, which is annually, we have a gathering and uh, they come with their sons. And we didn't used to allow mothers to come, but now we, <laughs> the last one and the next one coming, we have allowed mothers who are raising boys to come Yay. because uh, <laughs> it's becoming scarier by the day how the boys are turning out. And the assault, the assault globally on boys is quite scary. And we want to change the narrative, at least be able to raise our boys in a way that is edifying and glorifying to God. So that's basically who I am. I've said also the Church of Pentecost as deputy director for 16 years, the longest serving in the history of a church. Um, I also worked as counselor at the Pentecost University for 15 years. Um, I'm in transition now, <laughs> fully, fully into what the Lord is calling us to do. So that's basically who I am. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh my goodness, Elda. This is, I mean, I just, <laughs> I just remember just sitting at your feet while I was <laughs> like my second year or my third year. Like I was every time I had it. I like, and I'm like, I'm going to be at that conference. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your impact all over mm. the world. And you can testify. You, we've had even comments on Facebook. People all over just testifying on how much you've impacted them as young people. And yeah, saying, I read the gentleman's testimony. From yeah, hey. it was my CIC near high school. You know, it was so humbling. <laughs> yeah, you have impacted us. So thank you so much. But Elda, this is not to throw us off um topic Our conversation how, yes how have you because these are a lot of things you've done over the years how have you managed to do all of these things without losing 
your focus because you're doing this and that. You're doing all these many things. Yeah. So how have you managed to stay focused and to still live an enriched, happy life, so poor to your family? Because that's a problem our generation is kind of facing where we are finding it difficult to balance well the family time and then you know work yeah. and family balance. How have you balanced all of that and also maintain your focus? Not to throw, throw us off course, but I want to well. know how you all these years. <laughs> well, Hannah, you know, I have always said that I'm a product of God's grace. Um, I I am mindful that I am but clay. Yeah. Now, that constant reminder keeps me humble. That's the first thing. I also am a lifelong learner, and therefore, in this life, I look at those who have gone ahead of me, those who have done these things, and um, learn lessons from their lives. So I don't end up becoming the wrong side of what they didn't want to be. The third thing is that I have been encouraged by praying women. I have a platform called the Distinguished Women's Praying Room. And these are women that I send special messages to. So everywhere I'm speaking, they are aware of. Wow. Any event I'm doing, they know. These are very prominent women in our society. Some are as young as yourself. Some are older than yourself. And uh, they pray for me. They pray for me ceaselessly. Um, you know, and it gives me the confidence that the Lord is on my side. Mm -hmm. Then aside that also, I was impacted greatly uh, by Steve Atterburn's book, uh, Win at Work, Don't Lose at Love. And you may have seen me do some seminars for corporate people yeah. because that book impacted my life super. You know, um, when I was much younger and dealing with issues of young people and then realizing how uh, when they rise into corporate world, they struggle to keep the balance. Yeah. So many of them are not able to fulfill Proverbs 11 verse 1, which says a false balance is an abomination unto the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So that constrains me and I feel compelled by the love of God to do something yes. for my fellow human beings because we all are struggling sojourners and pilgrims on this earth but when we hold our hands together, we can go far. So these are some of the things we've done. And I also don't get busy about people's issues. I'm, I, I'm a very private individual, but for social media, you know, I, 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 I mean, I, for until recently, even YouTube, I didn't want to be there. You know, Facebook, I struggled to go there yeah. because when I, when I was deputy director, I go to Europe and the young people say, oh, can you post some things for us? You know, and I didn't have a website. If I have to, I don't have a website. Uh, I, have, I have protested those kinds of things. But now it's becoming evident that that is the way to go. Yeah. And so um, I am humble enough to accept that we have to put something out there for our young people to also be encouraged and strengthened. It's not because we have anything unusual. I I, I shudder to, to, to stay away from people who say they have something unusual. Nobody has anything unusual. Yep. All that we have is grace. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, let us not put ourselves in the space where Christ must be Lord. Um, as we develop a self-effacing posture, Christ will become supreme. Mm -hmm. And let us lift Jesus higher and lower our own you know trumpeting and and that's why usually when i'm asked to talk about myself i don't like because as a person who provides talk therapy you are not the focus it's usually the person who sits in front of you who is the focus so hannah you are the focus <laughs> well, let's, yeah. have, let's have hannah rich's conversation <laughs> and, <laughs> and take it forward thank you, thank you. Our, listeners, our listeners are I'll follow it to hear <laughs> about in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> to hear more about the solutions. Thank you, Elder. But, you know, just like you said, a false oh, balance yeah. is an obligation. Mm. I just wanted yeah. that as well, because everyone who is watching now, who will watch later, is definitely going through life, trying to balance, mm. you know, work and family. And that's, that's your expertise. So we just have to grab a little okay, bit. Okay, let me conclude with this one. 
Yes. You know, Jack, Jacqueline Smith published something in 2016 uh, in the Business Insider. I read all kinds of stuff. I <laughs> And Jacqueline Smith talks about 16 things that shows that your work is destroying your marriage. Oh. And I will encourage everybody to look for that publication. Okay. It's an amazing piece of writing. I mean... Put that name in the link. It's Jacqueline ja Smith. Jacqueline okay. Smith. Jacqueline okay. Smith. Yes, Jacqueline Smith. And um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a super read. And I think that every one of us who is in corporate space or in, an entrepreneur uh, person or even in ministry must read that. And the 16 pointers that she raised, for me, each one of us have a lesson to learn from it. Okay. Okay. We'll definitely put it in the link. Please make sure you get that book. That's a recommendation by Elder. Yeah. What he said so far also is it's God. It's really, I wonder how people do life without God. It's God. So not to mm -hmm. throw us off course, but please, no matter how you are juggling your work-life balance, just make sure that you're putting the focus on God and having a good balance. And go read the book Elder is talking about. So back... It's actually an article. It's an article. Okay, it's an article. Yes, it's a free article online. We're going to try to find it and post it um, on the on GH Gospels um, platform or mine or Elder, so you can just go read it. Thank you, Elder. So we're just gonna go back <laughs> to our in-laws um, and try to find practical solutions to deal with this. So far, we've spoken about looking, seeing in-laws with a new light, not what we already know, but a new lens. We've talked about working in Mali, their shoes, conversations, starters, having conversations with them to know them better. Um, and we're going to keep talking about the solution. That's like, and then we'll talk about the blessings that can come mm. from having mm. peace relationship with your in-laws. And after that, we're going to reveal the surprise before we go. The surprise that is C, C, C. So Anna, let's just give a few more points and we can go into the All place. right. Okay. So um, the other thing I will say is that when you're dealing with an in-law, deal kindly and directly with them. You see, there are persons who work through others to reach their in-law. And I find that quite disturbing because, see, no matter how honest or faithful a person is in terms of giving you an information regarding an in-law, um, they will give you insufficient information. Mm -hmm. And whenever I read the story of the Queen of Sheba, she haven't heard so much about Solomon and his wisdom, she decided to journey towards that and to see him for herself. herself and yeah. she, she, she remarked that what she had been told compared to what she had experienced, there was a marked difference. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is the reality of third party communication. Yeah. Don't use other people as a conveyor belt yeah. to reach your in-laws. Mm -hmm. Deal with them kindly and deal with them directly. It's That's important. Yeah. Also, don't only develop a relationship with your in-laws. You must learn to deepen the relationship you have. You see, there are individuals who only subsist and they are fine with the sophistry of the superficial relationships. Yeah. You need to move beyond that space and get into a place where there is a deeper relationship between you and your in-laws. Mm -hmm. And that would require you to take a step back and be courteous, be polite in the way you relate with them. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be one who is hostile or antagonistic. Yeah. And it's important, even where the in-law, whether brother, sister, auntie, uncle of your spouse becomes hostile, you don't have to face them with hostility mm -hmm. because you are, you are a person who is perpetually called to a ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. And therefore, you must have a message of reconciliation because your identity is a reconciler. Now, if we lose this, there's no way we can live harmoniously with others. And it's, in, it's interesting how Peter tells, oh, sorry, Paul speaks to the Roman church congregation and tells them that as much as it depends on you, live at peace with all men. Right. And yeah. so it's actually not dependent on your in-law. It's actually dependent on you yeah. to broker peace. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing which is a, sometimes a bit disconcerting and difficult for many is how to care front. I learned this word one time in a conference in Finland. 
um, they say care enough to confront. Mm -hmm. So they put care front instead oh. of confront. Oh. oh wow. Care front. Care front. Care front. Care you front. must care enough to face the issues that bother you mm -hmm. and constrain the relationship between you and an in-law. Yes. Because you see, but you must do that courteously. So confront your in-laws courteously. That's my prescription that's, that's uh, on that one. That's it's important that people learn that art of doing what it is that must be done. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some things you must avoid completely. And I, these ones, they are no-go area. Oh, no. we want to know. We want to know. <laughs> We want to know all yes. <laughs> <laughs> the first one. They all the yes. first one. Yes. The first one is competition with your in-laws. Mm -hmm. You got no business competing with your in-laws. No. no, no. We are not in a showcase or showbiz business no. uh, where we are competing with them to outdo them, to outpace them to out express them and all that. Uh, so stay away from competing with your in-laws. No competition. The second one is stay away from comparisons. Comparing yeah. them with your parents and how they nurtured you and how they relate with you. Your in-laws are in-laws. Yeah. They are not your parents. Exactly. But they are your relatives by means of marriage. And therefore, you need them as part of your life's existence. You cannot. I mean, the late Pastor Bimbo, who used to do marriage and single on TV, yeah. I used to watch her. Yeah. Unfortunately, she passed on through a very painful plane crash. Um, may her soul rest in peace. Um, she said that if you marry Satan's daughter, you must remember that Satan is your father-in-law by default. Yeah. And so knowing well that you went to Satan's home and married the daughter, you uh -huh. must learn how to live with satan yeah many of us know very well the kind of people we marry their children and yet we we pretend as if we didn't know they were like that and that they have become sudden tyrants or dictators or what have you so stay away from comparing them with your dad or mom i, I beg you don't go there. i love that oh my gosh <laughs> i love that then, yeah. The third one is hostility. I mentioned it in passing, but it's important not to be hostile towards your in-laws. You may have, you know, one or two difficulties with them, but you must not trigger hostility. You must not be the source of a hostile engagement with your in-law. Mm -hmm. Even if they are hostile, you must find creative ways of intervening or communicating with them. Otherwise, you're going to lose it big time. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of individuals who have lost it big time. I saw a video of a father giving his daughter's hand in marriage, and he gave his son-in-law a lot of prescriptions. Uh, I was wondering whether the young man will be able to live by those prescriptions. Uh, and that's a tough one, you know. I always tell the story of this young lady who, when they got married, she will come to bed late, later than the husband. The husband will be in bed, and she comes late. And then she will ask the husband, please go and turn off the light. <sighs> and this went on for a while. And then the guy gathered courage and asked her, why do you always do this? And mm -hmm. she said, well, in my father's house, my father was the one who turned off the light every evening. <laughs> <laughs> then the husband looked at her and said, you didn't marry your father. You married yeah. me. <laughs> you know? Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes we like hostility. Bring it on. Fire for fire. You know, you face them off. You know, all those kinds of things. The posture of bring it on is not helpful when you're dealing with in-laws. The fourth one is avoid chaotic communication. You know, sometimes people communicate cross-purposes. Hydra-headed communication. You're throwing everything around and you're not creating understanding. You're not conveying facts. You're not conveying figures. You are not exchanging emotions. And if you're exchanging emotions at all, what kind of emotions are you exchanging? Mm -hmm. It is one reason I recommend your book because I believe that anybody who picks the book and reads uh, will be appreciative of your personal story, some of your friends' stories, mm -hmm. and the propositions that you're making, as well as leaning on the anchor called the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we don't create chaotic communication. Uh, those 
those kinds of uh, gossip trails and stuff like that, you know, invectives, innuendos, diet traps, and all those things. They create chaotic communication. It doesn't help. Yeah. Now, also, avoid constant complaints. If you are always complaining, you're always finding something negative about your in-laws, clearly you're going to get them on the wrong side. Mm -hmm. And they will be reactive instead of being, you know, responsive to you. Uh, finally, um, don't create unnecessary scenes. Mm -hmm. Some of us have watched a lot of sitcoms, telenovelas, yeah. soaps, and stuff like that. So we tend to dramatize. Yeah. <laughs> we, we put up a lot of drama. We, we generate things that are avoidable, needless. And so I would want to plead that once you have a lover, a significant one in your life, and they have relatives, remember, whatever you do to the relative, you do indirectly or directly to your spouse. Yeah, yeah. Because there are persons who unfortunately operate on a mindset that says blood is thicker than water. Uh -huh. And when you are in that kind of space, you have to watch it. You have to be very careful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. I just want to sit here and just listen and keep listening. I just keep listening. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, like this. Uh, <laughs> so deep. Thank you so much. Please. It's an honor. I hope you all wrote everything out. If you didn't write it, you can go back and play, rewatch it, and write it down in addition to getting your copy of the code and the in-law code now elder I'm just yeah. go over a few comments questions mm, please do we unveil the surprise about creative couples conclave so please bear with me elder so i'm just gonna go um right here i there's a question here i saw a question i'm just trying to pick it up um it was by okay nancy, nancy says Please ask Elder how to deal with toxic and controlling in-law behavior. So if you're able right. to control it, they want to control maybe your marriage. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? All okay. right. Okay. I'm just going to read a few comments, then I'll let you answer all right. that. Okay. okay. Let me note it down then. Yes, please. How do you deal with controlling in-law behavior? In-laws that are controlling. Um, Tasha, thank you, Tasha. Tasha, says. Thank you, Rachel, for tagging everyone on there. Rachel says, y'all need to watch this. Um, Benjamin, uh, Tasha, Nah, and Yoko, thank you all so much. Tasha says, we are not competing with them, indeed. No, we are not competing with our in-laws. Yes, Tasha, we are not competing with them. Rachel says, deep inside, bless you, sir. Um, Nancy says, hair front, catchiously by Elder Amos. Yes. <laughs> hair front precious I, I love that too um mm. tasha says wow satan is your in-law by default because you are married to the child ouch god bless you sir <laughs> um thank you all so much for commenting for uh sharing meshach says great work thank you meshach meshach Hagen. um and esther kufika says great job thank you all so much for your comments if you have questions we have some few minutes to go but you can still leave them for elders to address them so elder how do you deal with controlling it was that just want to control your hmm. that's a very tough one you know um the the tendency for each one of us to be protective of our space renders us into the place where we define and determine that others are seeking to control us in fact when i read your book I came up with about eight kinds of in-laws. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you started off with the loud and the silent yeah. one. Yeah. Well, I need but... to write an article and post it on the website. <laughs> oh, that's an article. A follow-up article for decoding the in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and one of them is the controlling in-laws. Um, I also had the antagonistic in-law the fashionist in-law, uh -huh. the obstructive in-law, uh -huh. the intrusive in-laws, the destructive in-laws, wow. then the overprotective in-laws. Yes. That is seven. The eighth one is positive, the constructive in-law. Okay. okay. Wow. And an, an wow. example of the constructive in-law will be Jethro and the relationship between Naomi and Ruth. 
Yeah. Oftentimes we forget that in-laws are also mentioned in scripture. Yep. <laughs> Jesus took time to go to Peter's in-laws residence to pray for yep. her because she was taking ill. Yep. Peter was a good man to have taken Jesus to his mother-in-law. Yeah. I wish and pray that each one of us will take Jesus to our in-laws. Yes, yes. It is an oh. it, it is a far easier way of relating with in-laws. Yeah. yeah. I learned this when I was at Youth with a Mission, that before you go out on a mission to speak to a group of people, first gossip about them to God. Yes. And so if you gossip about your in-laws to Jesus, Jesus will handle the issues the way it has to be handled. Yeah, yeah. Let us learn to pray. And I'm happy that in your book you talk a lot about praying. If we fail to pray, we would have given too much arsenal to the enemy to destroy us. Oh my God. So this is what I will say. When you're dealing with the controlling in-law, first understand that they may be coming from a good place mm -hmm. except that the controlling is your interpretation mm -hmm. sometimes the person who is controlling may think they are being protective mm -hmm. yeah. some people yeah. too it is their way of showing how much they care mm -hmm. yeah my mother my mother when she was alive once said to us ninja <laughs> You know what it means? Those of you who know the crab, uh, not everybody likes eating crab, but those who like eating crab, you know that the crab uses its claws yes. to shake hands. So if it uses its claws to shake your hand, that is its handshake. It is not biting you. Oh, it's not a bite. Ouch. But yes. it's not, it's, it's that handshake is going to hurt me, man. <laughs> exactly. So some in-laws actually don't mean to hurt you, but inadvertently what they do renders you hurt yes, and yes. when you are in that place don't perpetuate the hurt don't amplify the hurt don't blow the hurt out of proportion don't fuel the hurt don't fan into flames the hurt don't feed the hurt don't fuel it you need to find a way of facing the hurt and finding solution oh and that's God. a very tough one wow wow thank you thank you so much Oda. i love i love your yes. that and i hope you're okay with the great with the um the answer from elda fancy uh, there's a few other questions um, please let's go with them yes there's another question that um what uh, right, this is from rachel sound rachel says what about couples who take sides with their parents so you know what you're so what about mm. people who will take the side of the spouse but will go and align themselves with their parents? How do you deal with a situation like All that? All right. Okay. So in, you recall that I did mention that the couple must learn to work together as a team, as a unit. Now, many of these things happen because the couple aren't working as a team. If they opt to work as a team, it is most likely that they will find expression that will be helpful for them as a couple. Now, the husband and wife need to sit down to have a conversation around their concerns. You see, oftentimes people make mistake in the area of not being able to tell their spouses what they expect of them. So I have a very simple assessment tool for expectations. You expect your husband to cooperate with you. He's, he appears not to be doing so. Your wife appears not to be doing so. The first question I have for you is, have you made a disclosure of the concern you have? So the first thing with expectations is that you must learn to disclose it. The second thing is, you must get into a place where you discuss the issues. Mm -hmm. The third, and that is a critical one, you must take decisions. And it is not you imposing anything on your spouse. It is both of you coming to the place of respecting one another and taking that firm decision together, owning same jointly, so that it doesn't become one person's word against the other, or one person thrusting him or herself on the other person. So that is what I would say. 
because it is the decisions that you have taken that you can hold each other accountable for. Yeah, that is, wow, that is so true. Thank you so much. And there's another question here from Tasha. Tasha says, how do you deal with in-laws who always wanted to be about them and nothing more? So they want all the attention, the focus to be on themselves and nothing. How do you also deal with that? So we go back to the same thing. We are not in competition with them. Competition. If they want to be in the front, let them be in the front. Mm -hmm. What is it that they want? Some of them, you know, when we're growing up, some children will cry to get attention. Mm -hmm. Some children will cry to get what they want. Yeah. Others will throw themselves on the floor, mess themselves up simply because they are desirous of something. There are individuals who definitely create a spectacle because they have a certain deficit in themselves. Once you know they are in that state, what do you do? You must take a different posture so that they, you don't become antagonistic or hostile towards them. It's also very important to mention that there are persons who have mental conditions. Some of it have not been diagnosed yet. Yeah. Some of it, they are not even in a state of awareness. And so that is why we have to be empathetic. Put yourself in the shoes. Like you talk about, walk a mile in their shoes. And yeah. you appreciate where they are coming from. So yeah. empathy is hearing with people's ears, seeing with their eyes, and feeling with their heart, we are told. And if that is the case, then we all must learn to be in other people's shoes so that we can relate well with them. Thank you so much. And I feel like, oh my God, this is amazing amazing time here right now i like i love one thing you said i just want to hit on it before we reveal our surprise um i love how you said that maybe god intentionally placed you in that marriage for you to lead your in-law to christ through your mm -hmm. actions or inactions how do you know if you because when paul was praying that take this turn away he said my strength mm -hmm. is made perfect in your weakness so Maybe that in law will never change. They will keep on being toxic over and over again. But you have to keep on shining your light as the light, mm -hmm. as the light you are. And through your light, your in law may say, What kind of person is this? We definitely want to know that God she knows. But not the case where your in law is like, I'm not even going to follow this. This people call themselves church goers. I mean, but you know, how, how will your in law see Christ through you? So I love that point. And also pray for them. And, the pastor Tony Evans, you know, he's like, when well, you pray for mm -hmm. someone, you get them off your nerves, like they are just on your last nerves, and then you put them on your heart because it's so hard to be angry with someone you're actually praying for. Praying for, mm. I, mean, I wish I could, Elder, I wish I could give everyone on here today a free copy of my book. <laughs> I am <love it. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> next week, so please, if you haven't followed me, like. You have to be watching out next week because I'm going to be giving out some free books before the launch day. So, I school wow. the alert for free because <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be such a blessing to you. And really well, let, let me say this about the book. Yeah. And I wrote in my endorsement, I enjoyed reading, decoding the in law yeah. code <laughs> in a world where outlaw relationship crisis either before or during the life cycle of marriage are becoming rampant within human relations this book becomes my go-to reference resource bank for the unmarried married counselors leaders and pastors hannah rich has given attention to this common challenge faced by many would-be couples and married persons today her combination of first-hand experience scriptural exhortations practical insights and everyday lessons drawn from others shared in the decoding the in-law code provide the reader with a cocktail of doable thoughts to be considered within the peculiar context i have been blessed and bettered reading this book and i know you would equally be blessed by it buy it read it relive it and share it with fellow pilgrims on this marital journey. Oh this is coming from gosh. Amos, Kevin, Anan. <laughs> woo, 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 thank you. <laughs> yes, you are elder. Amos actually is one of the endorsers of this book. <laughs> when I was reaching out to him, I was so scared because I was like, there is no way he will endorse my book. I mean, no oh, way. This yeah. man is full of rich experience. Uh -huh. 
read it and he actually endorses it and he actually recommends it. So please yeah. pre-order your copy if you're in Ghana. You can pre-order your Kindle copy if you're here in the US, in Europe, wherever. Pre-order your copy and by April 19th, you will receive your hard paperback copy. And I really hope I'll see all of you on the launch day on April 23rd. Those who are in the US who can come, please come. And those who will join us online, like Elda, Elda will be there live. So please join us online as well. I will be sharing, it's already on my page. But please make sure you join us April 23rd. So it's, it's also on people, my page. <laughs> also, okay, so follow Elder, please. But there's talk to Elder before we go creative couple. Well, PCC. Well, but by, by, by the kind grace of God, we spoke about Creative Couples Conclave. Uh, creative Couples Conclave, um, it's a place where we grow together as husbands and wives. It's a platform which is available to be joined by persons around the world. Now, as long as you're a believer and you love the Lord and you want to also improve coupling, you are welcome to join us. Now, there's no subscription at this point. We are still discussing how to go about those things. Um, so what we do now is free. We used to have it on WhatsApp. Now we are migrating from WhatsApp to Telegram so that we have one big global family. So we have what we call the Creative Couples Global Platform. And those of you who are interested, you can send a WhatsApp to this number and you would be connected. 0244-273365. Three, three, well, this is a global audience, and therefore you have to add plus 233. Three. Yeah. It has to be plus 233. Three. Mm -hmm. Now, there are regional chapters. One in the U.S. has been a bit dormant, but it's going to be really outdoored, and Hannah happens to be our coordinator with the husband so yeah. hannah is our coordinator for the united states yes. we just got somebody in australia who has started one there uh, we have one in dubai we have the ghana one and then we have an african group which is a, a spectrum of different persons across the african continent so you are open uh to this thing then you can join us I pray that the grace of God will help us as we grow together as husbands and wives from different parts of the world and we serve together. Creative Couples, our next event is coming off just um, this month, the 29th to the 2nd of May, 29th of April. Yeah, we have one in London, actually. We have one in the UK. Um, uh, Brago is the lady who is leading there. But because we are moving into the global page, um you can have your local whatsapp groups and whatever but we want everybody to be part of the global family because the vision is that 2024 we are having a pilgrimage to israel wow this is this is christian couples pilgrimage wow we, we want couples to walk where jesus walked yes yes <laughs> yes, yes. Oh. And, and that is the vision for 2024 wow. so uh, you can't you can't miss out join wow. the global platform hannah rich can send you the link uh yes. those of you who want to join okay they're showing some yeah, footages yes. from yeah. Yeah, yeah you know some of the so couples when i saw, uh, when I saw <laughs> the test on facebook i was like we need to be here y'all because life is so <laughs> stressful we don't take time to just yeah we, 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 we do a lot of stuff there yes yeah, mm. these are some of the fun stuff. Crazy yeah, about. we are. I mean, we are so many. We are currently about five hundred, but at a given time, we take about twenty-five for the retreat. We can't go beyond. But this year, the hotel we are—that's a typical creative couple style room. So you come and your room is decorated with two bars oh, of chocolate. Oh my and, god! And 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 those chocolates are used for something we call bridging the gap. Hey, he says. He says. I mean. <laughs> I don't know about you, y'all, but <laughs> all gotta join Creative Couples Conclave. Um, no matter well, thank you, Hannah, world. for the opportunity <laughs> to interact with you. And I want to encourage everybody, please try and get a copy of the book because I believe that we could do a lot. Um, Rachel, Sam, yes, you can be part. You will Rachel, be part, definitely. Yeah. Yes, so, yes. Uh, you know, you can either come to me or Elder 
Yes, Amos, any one of us. Amos page is creative. No, Amos, Amos Kevin Annan on Facebook, right? Oh, now what's your... Yes, it is, it is Amos Kevin Annan on okay. Facebook. Okay. Um, there are two of them. One is subscript. The other one is um, uh, lower, um, uppercases beginning, you know. Um, the other one is completely uppercases. That's the fan page. But my personal one is capitals beginning. But they are all Amos, Kevin, Annan. Any other one, don't follow it, please. Okay, so no matter <laughs> where you are in the world, you can yeah. message um, Elder Amos yeah. on Facebook. Or if you're in the US, you can message me, let me know, and I'll yeah. direct you. But first and foremost, regardless of where you are, you just download the Telegram app. Yeah. Then define, do they type in creative couples or how do they? Yeah, no, no, no. You can only join by a link we will send you got it okay so yeah. please make sure you connect please message us message me message elder let us know and we will nancy wants to sign up nancy in london rachel in london i will make sure i send you all the mess the link so that you can all join on telegram and if you're in let Canada, me just let me just remind them that you cannot be there alone you have to be there with your spouse oh because yes. we want you both of you to drink from the same source yeah. yeah we don't want a situation where one goes to hear the message and comes to tell the other let us all get it from the primary source so yeah. that nobody feels that they are being hounded <laughs> by something that was not there. You reported me to this man. And that's what you're talking about. <laughs> so please, it's couples on the platform together. It's not just one of us. Yeah. Go yeah. to, like Elder Emma said earlier, he has the singles in 3D. Yeah. So you join that group so you don't feel so lonely out there in the world, no matter where you are in the world as well. I think on Telegram as well, Elder, the singles. Uh, singles haven't gone on Telegram yet, okay. but we yes. we, 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 gonna, yes. we have an event this year, and that's when we are going to outdoor um, everything um, officially again. So okay. it used to be called Sensible Singles Single Summit, but people felt that the Sensible Singles was too strong, and the feedback that was coming, um, I had to be sensitive to that. Yeah. So prayerfully, we got singles in 3D because three dimension viewership has come <laughs> and then but the announcement is that this year's conclave the sessions are actually going to be available with vouchers for purchase okay. so it doesn't matter where you are in the world and in your own time you can get a voucher and then you go on a platform and then you can watch it oh oh yes so this year we we've actually gotten a company that is going to do that all the sessions and um one session that every one of you which is going to be done by my boss professor uh joseph osafo he's a clinical psychologist and a suicidologist that's his field of study and he's going to discuss with us how to turn your spousal relationship as a sanatorium oh. and you know sanatorium is where the you know mentally deranged people are kept how do you turn your home as a place where insanity can be seen as sanity. Oh my God, I, I have to be there. <laughs> well, and there's going to be there's going to be another one by one of my revered apostles of the Church of Pentecost, a former general secretary of the Church of Pentecost apostle, uh, Ringwell Atu Addison and his wife Mama Grace Addison, and they are going to speak to us about your health and your death is in the kitchen. Oh. They're going to touch on the issue of eating well, our nutritional balance and intake, how we must start with our children very early on these things so that they acquire certain tastes that is healthy so that they don't become persons who are hinging on junky stuff that is creating all the problems around the world. And there are many others. I mean, finding fulfillment through forgiveness, for instance, is another subject. Um, a lawyer and the husband who is a senior pastor of the Baptist church are going to take us through, you know, how to find forgiveness a fulfilling activity. Wow. Too many people find forgiveness as a difficult one. Yeah. My friend Michael and his wife Letitia Hinefa are going to discuss with us parenting, something on parenting. Mm -hmm. It's important. They're going to discuss healthy habits for parenting because wow. parenting is becoming a nightmare globally. And Michael and Leticia are sought after in our country here. Um, they are global persons. They're doing so many things around the world. Um, 
and we believe that what they have to share with us will be will be helpful and then you also look at unhealthy and healthy habits around conflicts because conflicts are inevitable because we have two types of conflicts intrapersonal conflict and interpersonal conflict so there's conflict inside you yeah yeah each one of us including myself there's conflict yeah I, I was sharing with some young people how one time i had a conflict in milan i was standing on the 29th floor of a building and i felt like jumping down Ooh. i was not suicidal but i felt i heard a sound that says jump down you land like rambo oh my gosh oh my god and, and you know what i said Hannah? i said the devil is a liar <laughs> I told you, get behind me, Jesus. You know, you know oh Paul, says that, Paul says that we have a, a tussle between our spirit and our flesh. Yeah. yeah. No, and I also be speaking to the subject. You know, I, for the past three years, I've been working on something called Spice It Up, which is intimacy, matters of sex. And I'll be discussing having satisfying sex as a couple. And Spice is sentiments passion intentionality chemistry and excitement or please, expression please don't miss don't <laughs> miss please follow follow elder amos kevin and on facebook follow even gh gospel <laughs> Foundation, gh gospel radio thank you so much for partnering with us and helping us be live so beautifully follow myself message us we'll connect you i mean this is not the end. This is not the end, y'all. So God richly bless you all for joining us. So many comments. Tasha, thank you. Nancy, thank you. Uh, Benjamin, thank you. Elisha, thank you. I can't read the comments. It's a lot. We're almost <laughs> out of time. Oliver says deep points. Thank you, Oliver. Nanatra of this says Elder. Oh, another question. Nanatra, I promise you I'll send that to Elder. Nanatra says, how do you deal with in-laws who are separated so that one doesn't mm. feel out one mm. over the other? That is a great let, question. Let Nana, let Nana connect with me. Let me Nana, please connect with Elder. We'll definitely answer that question. Um, thank you, Emmanuel. Rachel Sam, thank you so much for joining us. Esther Kofika says, Elder, God richly bless you, Pa. Thank Amen. you Amen. for joining. That's Dickness. Esther, the uh, Tantra Hill Assembly Church of Pentecost. Oh, wow. Okay. AJ says, PIWC Kosovo. Thank you, Ernestina. Elder, God bless yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. says, very well done. Thank you so much, Sammy. That's my son. <laughs> late gone. Rachel Whitey, thank you. Rachel uh, says, 100% decoding the in code to the world. I mm. can't wait for the impact the book will be making once mm. it's released. God bless you, Hannah Rich. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, Rachel Whitey, thank you all so much. So much. I'm just scrolling through. So, yeah, Rachel, Sam, you will definitely be part of Creative Couples London. And global Isaac, thank you so much, Isaac Kaleji. Hey, Isaac. Yeah, Isaac. Isaac, I know Isaac very well. Isaac, report yourself. Yeah, I know Isaac from Couples. He's my buddy. He's my brother. <laughs> Isaac, Isaac Kaleji, so report yourself wherever Isaac. you are. <laughs> oh my God, you don't want to go. Isaac says, "Nice see you, Mr. Anand and Hannah." Thank you, Isaac. <laughs> so much i mean we'll just love to stay here and just chat and answer questions but we have to go we are respective of your mm. time so thank you for everyone who has joined the past um it's been three weeks now we started with the singles discussing their <clears throat> perspective on in-law relationships then we came to the married people from different backgrounds different countries black married to white nigerian I mean, that was awesome. You can watch all of those replays on Change Gospels. Oh, Professor Safu is watching live. Oh, <laughs> wow, wow. Thank oh, you. Oh, dear Lord. Professor. God bless you. He's the you. head of psychology at the University of Ghana now. Wow, wow. Thank you, Professor Safu, for joining us. And to everyone who also watched later, thank you all so much. Please be on the lookout for all the events Elder mentioned, for all my, my book launch. For everything you're not doing this life alone we are here to support you by god's grace so please stay connected and keep on being the light in this dark world god bless you all so much bye have a wonderful weekend bye 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 hannah bye. Rich. bless you all <laughs> thank you elder, elder please stay bless on. i'll stay on yes. okay thank you and we are ending our life